In this video, I'm going to run through the process of installing a Windows 11 on ARM virtual machine on my MacBook Pro M1 Pro 16 inch using Parallels. So I recently picked up this MacBook Pro laptop changing over from my long history of using Windows desktops in, for office use and computing and so on. And I'm really loving the MacBook. But there's still a bunch of reasons why I may need to access Windows. There's a couple of specific programs, particularly for the home theater stuff that I do. The automation software to customize the way our, our automation system is controlled and the things it does in the house, for example, is only available on Windows, as well as a couple other things that I might need access to for personal use and for work as well. So this is possible to do right now to be able to install on the M1 MacBooks a Windows 11 installation built for ARM. And we'll run through the process of how to do that. So I'm going to kind of jump ahead and make just a couple of assumptions. One is that we're going to use Parallels. So I expect that by this point, you already have Parallels installed on your Mac, you're licensed for it, and you're able to use the program. Parallels Desktop is available right in the Mac App Store. I always prefer, if I can, to try to get my apps directly from the Mac App Store versus from a third party if possible. So I've already done that here. I have my Parallels license. I have Parallels installed and available to be used. One other thing that you're going to need to do is that the Windows on ARM preview, essentially, is only available to insiders. So I'm in Edge browser here. I've logged into my Microsoft account, and I'm already established as an insider for Windows. I'm actually an insider for a, a variety of Microsoft things. I, I use the insider builds on my Xbox console, and I've always used them on my Windows machines also. So it's easy to do if you have a Microsoft account. It doesn't cost anything. You can sign up to be an insider, and you set certain levels on your machines where you're using insider builds for how much, uh, how advanced of an alpha or a beta type of distribution do you want to have access to. So once you're set up as an insider, you can access this Windows Insider Preview Downloads page and get the Windows 11 on ARM Insider Preview. The latest client is available here. I'm going to go ahead and download that. Okay, so we see here in Finder the download completed, and we have this Windows 11 Insider Preview.vhdx file. So I'm going to go ahead and start Parallels Desktop. And we see here the Installation Assistant. Install on Mac with Apple M1 chip. Your Mac computer is powered by the Apple M1 chip that is built on the ARM architecture. If you need Windows, please join the Windows Insider program. And they have links to actually help you do this. Parallels has, has jumped on this right away and made this work. So there's a variety of help available if you need it. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. And what we're looking to do here is create new install Windows or another OS from a DVD or an image file. And we, of course, we have the image file. That's what we just downloaded. So we're going to continue for that. Select installation image. It's already found it in my downloads folder. So another question here for the assistant. I will primarily use Windows for productivity or games only. Um, in my case, I'm going to choose productivity. Name and location, let's call this Windows 11 VM. And in terms of where I'm gonna save it to, I just made a folder on my desktop called Windows VM, and we're gonna store it there. The download itself was 9.3 gig of file size, and it says here 10.7 gig of disk space will be used. You actually don't need, as, you don't need a whole lot of space to set up one of these virtual machines. We'll go ahead and click on Customize Settings before installation, and then we're gonna create. So it's unpacking, it's managing the file in the background. It's actually pretty quick. So here we have a few options. We can rename the VM again, change what we're configuring for, mention of what the disk space is, and so on. If we go through additional options, we can control startup and shutdown behavior. I'll use this on demand, essentially, so I'm going to do startup and shutdown manually. You can set up shared folders, determine whether you want to run the VM in full screen, how picture in picture and some other things work. Um, I'm not really looking to do anything super advanced with this. Again, I just want to be able, for me, I want to be able to just fire up the Windows 11 installation, install a couple of very specific programs, and be able to run them on demand. On the hardware tab, we can control how much resources and what the VM has access to. 
So we see here CPU and memory automatic for this Mac, four CPUs and six gig of RAM will be allocated. You could also switch it over to manual, but I think that's fine. Um, this is the 10 CPU core MacBook M1 Pro. Um, so allocating four to the Windows VM is fine, as well as six gig of RAM. I have 16 gig of RAM on the machine. And again, I'm not gonna be running all that much on the Windows VM. If you, The more you're gonna do with your Windows VM, of course, the, lar the larger pool of resources you would want to allocate to it, but this will be fine for me. Uh, resolution will leave best for Retina. Mouse and keyboard are set to auto detect. I, I've used this in the past. I've had no problem with the Windows VM recognizing input from the MacBook's keyboard or the touchpad. Share printer, sure, not a big deal. I probably won't really print much from Windows, but just in case I want to. Share network, all of this stuff by default. Generally speaking, the default options are all really, really good in here. Um, sound output, again, default and shared. I don't have any specific USB elements that I need to control. And I just have the one hard disk in here. And we don't need to make any changes. There's no, um, no optical drives. TPM passes for this in a in boot order. It will only be booting this Windows VM, in my case, off of the in, included hard drive. So I didn't need to change a single thing through there. Um, security, encrypt with password, turn on if necessary. I don't feel the need to do that. And backups, uh, smart guard. I'm not actually sure what this is, but this is not mission critical stuff for me. I'm not gonna use these capabilities. So essentially, default config is pretty solid. One thing with the disk space is that this won't actually occupy or permanently reserve 256 gig from my experience using this the first time. It'll basically size on demand, but this is the most that the, the Mac will allocate to it. The MacBook I'm on right now is actually one terabyte SSD, but I'm planning to exchange it for a 512 because I'm use, uh, I, just, I don't need the one terabyte and I'd rather save the money and the cost difference. So we'll go ahead and continue. Starting Windows 11, please wait. Parallels desktop would like to access the camera. Of course, Mac puts a bunch of protections, app-based protections on its resources and so on. So there's gonna be a few of these pop-ups that need to be individually allowed. So we'll allow for the camera, we'll allow for the microphone. And there we see our Windows installation, essentially beginning. And there we go, installation complete. So I did speed that up uh, by, uh, by a few X. Um, all in all, it didn't take that long, a uh, few minutes maybe total. Installation complete, click to continue. So we'll go ahead and full screen this. And this is it, Windows 11 desktop. I'm gonna close, close Edge. This is fully featured, fully featured, fully working. So we see there, it's actually downloading to the latest build automatically. Windows update works. I'll end up signing in in a moment to my, my Windows account. You're able to go ahead and use a product key, right? To be able to unlock all of the features that are locked if you're not using an activated version of Windows 11. So we'll go ahead and let this finish updating and pop right back. All right, that took a while, longer than the actual installation to do the first update. I guess that's not always so uncommon for Windows, but um, download and install here at 100%. And let's see what it does when we restart a Windows VM. All right, back to the Windows desktop. So very seamless in the sense that it didn't even kick me out of parallels, didn't even kick back to the desktop at all. But of course, that took a long time. And we see here, Parallels Tool Installation Agent. Please wait, installing Parallels Tools. The first time I did this, when they first released this capability, 
I didn't see this before. Um, obviously, there's been some advancements since then. So as usual with this stuff, you just want to let it, let it sit, let it do its thing, get all the automatic stuff ready to go before you really try to start using it for anything. Parallel Tools has successfully been has been reinstalled successfully. Some features will be available to you. Restart Windows. Let's do that. It's good that they're keeping up to date with the with the releases. Kind of a bummer though, right? Because we downloaded the installation image. Obviously, it did more than just a small minor update. That was essentially a, a full-blown reinstallation of the operating system to get it up to the current Insider build. It'd be nice if they just had made that available, that code available in the first place so that the bits we got off of the web page didn't need that. But again, we're in here now, full-blown Windows 11. Um, all the capabilities work. I will be able to rename this machine Finish doing updates, the Windows Store will operate. I'll get myself a Windows key and activate it. We can see here Windows isn't activated. I don't have a free key to use for this VM, but um, just a matter of buying one and then going to the activation and typing your key in. Again, you can log into a Microsoft account and take advantage of all the regular online services, syncing and so on uh, that you get from using Windows with a Microsoft account. But before I do that, I'm going to rename the machine and a couple of other things. Um, just to look at some of the options that are available. If I go back to the, to the desktop here, we can see Parallels is running on the menu bar, Windows 11 VM. I can change the view, do a bunch of other actions, pause, suspend, shut down, restart. Make sure that I can access devices, configure access to different devices, and so on. Change my preferences. Let's pop out of the full screen view. And we'll make this a little bit here on the desk, make this visible here on the desktop. Um, you can see the resolution, everything resizes. Again, this works very well. To me, it's very seamless. When we want to shut down, we can do so a couple different ways. You can shut down from Windows itself. That'll close the VM, close the Windows, and close the VM itself. So Parallels itself here is still running. I can go ahead and quit Parallels entirely. If I want to boot that Windows VM again, I can relaunch Parallels Desktop, starting up. And as the one VM that I have configured, it goes right in right back into there. If I needed to reset any of my options, resources, and so on, I could do so. Total disk space used by this VM after all of that setup, all of that updating, only 31 gigabytes. Not bad. Click the start button. We'll go ahead and boot right back in. Very fast, very zippy, very responsive. And again, running with four cores and six gigabytes of memory. So this is bit. This is pretty solid. Um, there, there had been some discussion that that Microsoft might be cutting the support for this off. I really, really hope they don't. Um, Apple is 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 in this transition where everything Apple is going to be these M1 chips, these ARM-based chips, and so on. And so, in order to have access to Windows, we need this Windows 11 on ARM capability. So crossing fingers, making an appeal, Microsoft, please don't remove this capability. This is so good. The Mac users still need Windows sometimes. We'd very much like to have access um, to the operating system. And huge kudos to Parallels for connecting all of this stuff together and jumping right on it and making it work. So if you have any questions, if there's something else that I could demonstrate in a future video, please post in the comments. One other thing we could take a quick look at here, if I go ahead into Finder, into my desktop, and into that VM folder, we can see the whole thing is contained in one file, Windows 11 VM.PVM, a PVM file. And just as we observed in the resources screen, 31 gigabytes of space required to use this. 
So we just had a pop-up there. When not in use, Windows 11 is automatically paused to minimize resource usage, save the max battery life. But if I just click back in here, it'll go ahead and resume. So my battery is getting low, 34% right now. That might have been why it kind of did that so quickly. But I, I think it does its best to manage those resources again in the background. And by suspending, you're getting some of that RAM back. You're getting those cores back for use in Mac OS. So that's Windows 11 on ARM VM on Mac with an M1 Pro chip. Pretty cool, very seamless, basically had to do nothing but just click through a bunch of wizards and, and we, were, we were right in. So if there's anything that you'd like to see, let me know, post in the comments if you have some questions, if there's something that I could demonstrate with this in the future, let me know. Thanks, please like and subscribe for more content.